Hello there, in the last screencast I showed you how to get the HTML5 slide deck for Mozilla Reps and how to present in it. Today I'm going to show you how to actually build your own presentation in it. So once you downloaded the system, you will have something like that on your hard drive, a folder with a pictures folder, scripts and themes, and three of the presentations that it comes with, a Mozilla example HTML, which has all the different slides possible in it, a Mozilla mission, which gives you mission information, and a Mozilla HTML, which gives you overview of what we're doing at the moment. Don't do anything in the scripts or themes folders unless you want to give it back to GitHub because whenever we do something to the main core of the presentation system, your changes in there will be overwritten. In the pictures folder, you can go nuts and you should as well. So if you want to put new pictures inside your own presentation, the best thing is to create a new folder in there and put the images in there because otherwise you have one massive folder full of JPEGs and it can get confusing. So let's quickly do that right now for like my presentation. So we create a new folder and we move it inside the pictures folder. And later on, we're going to put an image in there. So let's take this stinky.jpg image here and put that one into the My Presentations folder. So now you have your images in there and you can use them in your slides. The first thing to do is just take the Mozilla example HTML and copy it and rename it to what you want it to do. So My Presentation, for example. Then you have something to actually start uh, start showing in the browser and start looking at. So out of the box, all the different slides are available in this slide system here right now. So you've got your title slide, you've got links, uh, lists, you've got nested lists, you've got smaller lists and so on and so forth. They're all quite uh, self-explanatory and you can actually try them out and only copy the ones that you need to copy to make your own presentation rather than starting from scratch every single time, which is quite useful all in all. Now, to edit any of these files, I recommend a good HTML editor. A good HTML editor means some an HTML editor that doesn't mess with the code without you knowing it. So know what you see is what you get editor or not uh, a Google Docs or like Word or anything like that. For this now here, let's take Adobe Brackets because that's free and available for all the operating systems that you might want to use. So to do this right now, let's open a new folder, uh, in a new file. And what we want to have is the file that we just generated, which is called My Presentation HTML. And this is what it looks like. There's lots of comments in there. There's lots of information in the system itself. So you don't have to actually start from scratch and get confused about what's going on here. The first thing you might, you might want to change is the fade class here on the HTML. This one is the class that makes sure that the slides fade slowly into each other. So you can see that there's a slight fade of one second from one to another. If you don't want that, just remove the class and you will see that the slides just jump into each other rather than fading right now. I like the fade, so I leave it in there. The next thing people want to have is to get rid of these slide numbers here. You do that by adding a class called no numbers to the HTML and then the numbers are gone and there's no slides anymore, uh, no numbers anymore that confuse your users or confuse your readers. Um, the, the progress bar here as well can also be easily removed by going to the end of the document and just deleting the progress bar. And that way you don't have a progress bar at all. You just have your slides and nothing that distracts people out there. Now, the best thing to do is just go through these different uh, slide systems and understand which ones you want to use and just change them for your needs. So you don't have to write any HTML much by hand. Each of these slides start with these two divs and, uh, these, and end with these closing divs. So this is one slide. So all you have to do to change that is copy it and paste it on, uh, after the other one. There's a few things in there that you should be worried about or should consider. And one of them is that every slide needs, an, it needs a unique ID. This is how the system actually navigates to them. This is what the URL should become. And this is how you can actually differentiate between the, the two. So if we now have an, a, a slide in there with two of them of the ID cover and we reload the presentation, you will find that it doesn't work anymore. So I can now double click on the first one and I can go to the next one and then I'm stuck. Uh, no matter what I do to the system, except for going back three times, doesn't do anything anymore. So I get stuck in the forward of my presentations, which is bad. So make sure that each of those have a unique ID. So for example, saying my slide here, and then you can start changing the content. Like, um, let's put something here called OI. 
if you reload now the page here, you will see that your slide is becoming one of those systems because the ID here has changed. So this is how simple it is to put your own slides in there. The other stuff is rather self-explanatory. You've got your nested lists like you normally have in HTML and you have long lists if you want to have more of them. The only thing that is slightly different are the lists that go step by step. So these need a class called inline and the first element needs a class called active. So if you see, if you look at that in the browser, you will see that they animate one by one rather than like this being displayed in one go. So these ones fade in smoothly when you go forward and backward with your presentation. Uh, each slide needs a class of slide to be a slide, but some of them get extra classes to be different. So, for example, in the uh, the last one you saw here is a shout slide. Shout slides mean that the text is just in the middle and nothing else is in there. So if I were to remove that right now, you would see that it becomes a normal slide, but with the shout class on it, I can just say like, oh, wow, big, big shout out to the audience. And you see that works easily. There's quotes in there. There's all kind of other things. These are pretty simple to explain. Code needs to be encoded in HTML and needs to have a code on each line of the code. You have mark elements to mark them in yellow and mark class important to mark them in red. And you've got a class called uh, called comment on the code to give it a, a, a code view. So this one is the light gray one and these are the highlights that you saw with the mark elements. You automatically get numbering, so that's pretty sweet to have in your slides. Images are the last bit I'm going to explain quickly here. So we've got a centered image here, which is just an image source, Mozilla Overview Red Panda, and has a class of middle. If you change that class to, for example, right, it will be to the right of the screen. If you change it to left, it will be to the left of the screen. And that's as simple as it is. If you uh, the middle class actually centers it horizontally and vertically, so that's pretty good. If you want to resize it, the easiest way, which is not quite clean but fair enough, is to just add a width element to the page, uh, to the image itself, and then you can resize it accordingly. That's the easiest way of dealing with this. So uh, if you want to have some extra styling for it, you don't do the styling on the image itself because it's not that easy to do generated content on an image in HTML, but you need a figure element around it. So you put a figure element around the image, remove all the classes from the image, otherwise they might interfere. So you then set a class on it called, for example, middle, and that will center it. And you can also have a class called frame, and that puts a little image frame around your slide. So you can see that nail here that it's hanging from. There's also a class called swing, which makes it much uh, makes a, puts a little animation in there, so your image swings around it. Quite silly, but actually I found it that the audience is quite like it. So this is how to do special effects on the image itself, which is pretty simple and self-explanatory if you think about it. So this is all I have here, actually. Just look at the HTML and see how it's done and change it to accordingly what you want to have. If you want to put your own image in there, all you have to do is change the, uh, the URL or the source of the image here. So for example, earlier we put the stinky image inside the folder called My Presentation. So what I'm doing here is just instead of having Mozilla Overview, I say my presentation, because that's the folder we created, and stinky.jpg, and then we got the image in there, and we name it uh, differently and give it an alternative text, a small stinky. And when we save that now and reload it, you will see that it's a new image in there, but the rest stays the same and it automatically centers it for you. So this is how to change those slides. Just copy and paste the Mozilla example and change it to your needs. So happy presenting.